Hello everyone! It's Shaggy Lube, Hammy Dude, Yammy Noob. For all of you Rossi worshipping sweet baby yams out there, thank you for subscribing and liking the awesome content we've been putting out. You did subscribe, right? Don't forget to smash the subscribe button. Today we're gonna go over a style of bike that's been coming back in the last few years. I'm talking about retro modern motorcycles. What are they? Glad you asked. Retro bikes are ones that resemble some of the cooler bikes from the past that were originally manufactured in the 50s, 60s, or previous decades. For riders with a lot of nostalgia for simpler times, well, you're in luck. It seems everyone is headed towards the past. We've seen the return of muscle cars, movies from the 80s reemerge with remakes or new sequels, and now we have motorcycles with the look and style of decades past, both technology of today. Awesome. Nobody wants to futz with a carburetor. So without further ado, let's get on to the best retro modern motorcycles you can swing a leg over. Number one, the Triumph Bonneville T120. Well, if you haven't discovered Triumph's newfound love or at least acceptance of me, then check out my video on the Tiger 900 and my trip in Morocco to see the bike launch. That's right, it seems persistence is the key when you really want something in life. That cute girl downstairs? No, that's just stalking and you should go to a different girl. The Bonneville T120, which almost sounds like a Terminator, is the epitome of a retro bike. With its single round headlight, prominent turn signals, and round mirrors, and a flat one-piece seat, this thing is as close to the iconic 1959 design that you can get. On retro bikes, you take your LED turn signals and fancy pants electronics and shove it. Seriously, in actuality, the housings are retro in design, but the bulbs themselves are LED, giving this bike the best of both time periods. The T120 has a 1200 cc parallel twin that pumps out 80 horsepower and 77 foot pounds of torque. It's got a six speed transmission and a top speed of about 120 miles per hour. Some of its best features are ABS brakes, a USB charger, traction control, and riding modes. This bike has electric start, a kill switch, and even digital numbers in the gauges for things other than your speedometer and engine RPMs. If you're looking for the best of both worlds with looks and styling form the past and technology of the future, this is one of the best retro modern bikes on the market. With an MSRP of only $11,800, this bike is an affordable intermediate or permanent addition to your stable. Speaking of your stable, is it empty? Do you need a bike? Well, you're in luck. I'm still taking entries for the Beginner Bike Giveaway series, which means you still have the chance to win the Ninja 400, DRZ 400, or CB 650R. But time is running out. March 7th is our last day so you can get your entries in to win. So hit up yamminoob.co, get signed up on a subscription tier, get your entries in, and then you will be entered to win one of these amazing motorcycles. Seriously, I'm gonna give them away. March 7th is our last day to get entered, so make sure you mark that on your calendar. But if you're not feeling a subscription and you don't want access to our amazing Discord server, head over to yamadubemerch.com and pick up some of our sweet merchandise. Remember, every dollar you spend gets you an entry to win. Next up on our list is a bit of a controversial bike. It's the Suzuki Katana. Before the days of the GSX-R and other squid missiles was the day of the Suzuki Katana. Originally hit in the streets in 1981, this bike became a legend and pioneer for fared bikes and standards. It was discontinued in 2006, but the Katana has always been a favorite amongst many sport bike riders. For some, it was their first, and for others, their forever bike. In 2019, Suzuki revamped and re-released the Katana for the 2020 model, now classic bike from the 80s was reborn as a retro classic, and I for one couldn't be happier. This retro styled bike is basically an update and evolution to the old Katana design with updated styling, a beefier engine, which is actually just an old GSXR engine, and new technology, it's now a standard bike that makes its own niche. The Katana has a 998cc engine based on the 2005 legendary K5 Jixxer 1000 and puts out an ample 150 horse. It's got Brembo front brakes, ABS, LEDs, and a six-speed transmission. This bike is for fans of Suzuki that aren't total squids. Do those even exist? Besides the GSX-R line, the Hayabusa, and the Cruisers, Suzuki produces a lot of practical and commuter-friendly bikes, such as the GSX-S line and now the Katana. One of the best updates to the Katana is the simple LCD display gauge cluster. With a digital display of RPM and speed, the display puts everything pretty simply into one unit. Gone are the days of retro bikes with incandescent bulbs and sweeping needle gauges. Suzuki did an awesome job on the new Katana, and they did away with different engine sizes as well. For $13,500, this bike is every bit of performance you want in a retro style bike that lives up to its predecessors. Number three, it's the Indian FTR 1200. One of the most hyped up bikes in the last couple of years is the Indian FTR. I actually just did a ride and review of Dan Dan the Fireman's personal Indian FTR, which you can watch here. 
This bike is a new design that brings in a lot of old school Indian styling. And the FTR, that stands for flat track racing, which tracks are made of dirt, but are flat and oval shaped. The FTR has a 1203cc V-twin engine pumping out 123 horse and 87 foot-pounds of torque. This bike has a LED lighting with a single round headlight housing at the front and seamless rear light array at the rear. Stopping power is provided by Brembo brakes with ABS while cruise control and a USB charging port come standard on this bike. It's an excellent mix between a cruiser and a standard, but it doesn't quite feel like a sport bike. The retro designs and modern performance of the FTR are perfect for someone who needs a bike that's going to perform well on the low end while not needing those insanely high top end speeds. Because of those Dunlop D3R radial tires, this bike can go off-road, keep it on dirt, sand, and other packed down surfaces, and try to stay away from those single tracks, huh? This isn't a dual sport, but a very capable bike intended on racing on non-asphalt surfaces. Next up, it's the Ducati Scrambler Classic. Next on our list of retro bikes is none other than the Ducati Scrambler. So you guys know I own a desert sled variant of this motorcycle, but it comes in 13 different variations. For the purpose of this list, I'm gonna use the Classic as the example since we're talking about retro bikes. The Classic has an 803cc V-twin producing 75 horsepower. It has a desmodromic engine, so of course, you get that awesome Ducati Classic air-cooled sound. The Scrambler Classic is styled after, you guess it, what's now known as the Classic Ducati Scrambler. Originally produced between 1962 and 1976, the current rendition takes the same look and adds modern features to the platform. The Classic has a single round gauge with a digital readout for mileage, speed, and etc. Keeping it current with other retros, this bike has a a single round headlight and a one piece seat. Although intended for off and on roading, the Scramblers of today are more of an homage of these past. You can take the Scramblers off road, but in the much of the same sense of the ADV bike, it's not a true dirt bike or not a true dual sport, even though my desert sled is a little more capable than these Scrambler classics. The MSRP on this Ducati is $9,695, which makes it pretty affordable for the quality of motorcycle that you're getting, and Ducati knows that since they've sold a whole heck of a lot of them. Number five is the Kawasaki W800. This one's a bit of a sleeper hit, but coming back and look and feel to Kawasaki's previous models from 1960s and 70s comes the W800. Production on these bikes resumed in 2019 after a brief stint between 2011 and 2016. The W800 has all the classic features of the previous models, but also combines the current Tekka today. The 773cc parallel to an engine produces 46 horsepower and 46 foot-pounds of torque. Foot pounds, foot pounds. I said it right. I don't know. It has one PC designed for the rider and passenger and has, of course, the single round headlamp. Just like other modern retros, it has an upgraded LED build and not a traditional halogen one. Included is a slipper clutch, ABS brakes, and it is fuel injected. Coming in with a price tag of under $10,000 at $9,199 for the 2020 model, this bike is perfect for anyone looking for more than just a beginner or starter bike, but doesn't need a leader bike performance, but doesn't want a cruiser either. The W Series from Kawasaki has a cult-like following and carves its own path separate from the ninja aficionados and squids on their famed sport bikes. The W800 is a great retro modern coming from one of the big four in Japan and a lot of people say it's a better Bonneville than the Bonneville. Are they right? Who knows? Number six, the BMW R9T. If you didn't know it, BMW produces more than just ridiculously fast super sports and one of the most famous ADV bikes. BMW also has the retro themed bike, the R9T. This Roadster is powered by a twin cylinder boxer displacing 1170 cc's and producing 110 horsepower and 86 foot pounds of torque. This bike has a road ready weight of 489 pounds and a single round headlight. This was the style back then and everyone sticks to it in this class. The BMW has a unique shaft driven setup with a six speed transmission. Top speed's about 125 miles per hour, but you're probably not gonna be doing that on this motorcycle, are you? Some other great features are adjustable rear suspension, automatic stability control, and a power socket. Information is displayed to the rider via two gauges with a sweep needle and digital displays. The r 9 is touted as a bike ready to be customized. BMW offers a wide array of accessories straight from the factory. Seats, handlebars, engine guards, and covers, and even navigation are all added as factory options with purchase. With an MSRP starting at 15 dollars 
5, the R9T is a bike built upon the classic BMW style and heritage, but is refreshed for the current generation of riders. And last on our list is probably my favorite of the bunch, it's the Yamaha XSR 700. Last but not least on our list is the Yamaha, do you guys know me by now, XSR 700. With a 689cc parallel twin engine and a cross-plane crank, you heard that right, this baby pumps out a 74 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque. Now if that sounds a little familiar, it should because it's basically an FZ07 wearing a suit. In fact, there's a Discord boy of ours, tried and true, who loves his. His name is Castro, and he's always posting up photos of it on our channel. Maybe we can throw up a screenshot right here because it is such a pretty bike. It falls in line with designs of the other bikes with its single round headlamp. All right, if it's retro, it's only allowed to have one headlamp. There, that's settled. In all seriousness, it pulls off the look of the retro modern seamlessly. With one piece banana seats accommodating the light and nimble frame of the bike, it's got a wet weight of 410 pounds. It's one of the lightest on today's list. Modern features include LED brake lights, a one-piece LCD system for display, engine RPM, and other indicators. This bike's MSRP is $8,499. Yamaha did an awesome job capturing the heritage and style of their older bikes while incorporating newer features and updated tech for current and future riders. I would definitely rock an XSR 700. I think it's an absolute peach of a bike. That's going to wrap it up for today's video. Are there any other retro moderns that stand out to you? Could you see yourself riding one of these? I know I can because I've got one. I got my Desert Sled. It's fucking awesome let us know in the comments if we missed a couple don't worry you'll find them in part two are we gonna make a part two we might thanks for your continued support don't forget to hit like and subscribe we've managed to convert another couple hundred thousand ghost subs into real subs in fact we're sitting at just under 580,000. thanks again until next time fact Colrophobia is the fear of clowns roughly 7.8 percent of americans have this fear and are petrified of them goodbye